Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Rogers and for the next hour we're going to be covering five concepts in mathematics according to Mortensen Math. Now, the Mortensen Math is a uniform methodology for the visualization of the mathematics. Now, we start with five concepts that are simple and easy and I'm here to tell you that really these five concepts cover the mathematics. Now, every textbook I've ever worked in, and I've worked in many, many with many kinds of kids, many children and adults, cover these basic five concepts in one variation or another. As I go over them, you may want to keep them in mind and see how they apply to various problems in mathematics. So let's start with concept number one. Concept number one is very simple. When we study mathematics, what are we studying? Well, we're studying numbers. And what can we do with numbers? All we can do with numbers is count. And the highest number we can count to is 9. And what allows us to count? Well, in order to count, things have to be the same. Let me illustrate. These are simple units. There's 1, 2, 3. How many? Well, three. And it's very easy because they're all the same. Any little child can count this. Now, let's see. We're just talking about color here. I've got three green ones, and now I have two orange ones. Can I count to five if I say how many uh, green ones? Can't count to five. Can only count to three. But if I change the set and I say, well, now how many blocks up here? Now I can count one, two, three, four, five. That's a simple illustration. These could be apples and oranges, green apples and oranges. If we were counting fruit, we could count all of them. If we were counting apples only, we could only count to three. If we were counting oranges, we could only count to two. Now, same is a crucially important concept in the mathematics. Have you ever seen a student do this? Simple fractions and come up with, or sometimes, that. Well, what happened here? They just added the numbers without understanding the concept of same or same kind. Let's look at that problem again using Mortensen Mathematics. We can see here simply this is 1. This is still one, but we've broken it into two parts. And here we have one broken into three parts. Further, I can take it and see that I can separate these into two parts. So I still have one, I just have two pieces of it. And here I have one with three parts. They're all one. But now I can go further and show a small child well, if I just talk about this one right here, this part, well, now it's not the same as that kind of one, is it? In order to count, they need to be same. But I can say I have one of two pieces, one of two parts. This tells me how numerous, and this tells me the kind. And this is the important concept. We have to know what kind it is before we can count it. Here, I have one of three. Very simple. So now I can see that if I put these two together, certainly I don't have two fifths, as we saw earlier, but I can't really count them, can I? I have to make them same. Now, if we were doing this in a lesson, we would take a long time to develop these concepts. But because I only have an hour, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here and make them same. And the way we're going to do this is like this. Can you see now that I've made this into six pieces? All right, and here I've made this into six kinds. Now we can see they're same. 
So here it's easy to see that I still have one and I just have it in six pieces, and here I have one and I have it in six pieces. Well, how do I do that here? Well, can you see that one of these, again, needs to be divided into pieces? Now, can you see that I have one of these pieces? And what I have here is three of six. Can you see that? I have one, two, three out of the six. It's the same thing as one half, but it's one, two, three of six. So I can write that like this. Three of the six kind. And all we've done is multiply by one. Now here, when I do this, I'm going to do the same thing. And I have one of them. And can you see I have two of one, two, three, four, five, six pieces? Two of six. And I can write that. Hmm. Like this. Now, three of the six kind and two of the six kind becomes very easy to add. We can even see that they're same. If I take this piece and flip it this way, they're exactly the same. And I have five of the sixth kind. The concept of same is a crucially important concept in mathematics. We can't count unless they're same. The rules didn't change in fractions. We just need to understand that we can't count unless they're same. Let's illustrate this point using Mortensen math. Here we have some units. And if you ask a child to count these, or even an adult to count these, you pretty much have to count them one by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But if we form them into a rectangle, they become very easy to count. And now I can see that if I have a rectangle that's simply three over and four up, oops, three times four is 12. But the rectangle makes it very easy to count so that I don't have to count every single block in there. Let's try again with sixes. Can we see here? Each one of these is 6. This is 3 by 6. The whole thing is 18. 3 by 6, 18. And it doesn't change if I change it the direction. 6 by 3, still 18. Some people give that a complex name, like the associative property of multiplication. Now, the next concept We've come all the way from basically 2,000 years ago with just those three concepts. But the next concept, and this is bringing us up to about, oh, the time of Christ or so, is uh, the concept of zero. Zero. Zero is our hero because he does so much for you. And the fifth concept is the concept of one. If you're going to count, you need to know what one is. This guy named One Stone came along about a, a century ago. Have you ever heard of One Stone? And he said, if you're going to count, you need to know what one is, and even then it's going to be relative. Actually, his name was Einstein in English. Or excuse me, in German. One stone in English. Anyhow, let us begin in earnest with the Martinson math, showing you how to take these concepts and do complex mathematics. Let's take some simple addition. In the Martinson math, you'll see We spend a lot of time with the concept of numbers are made up of other numbers. And all numbers want to be 10. What does 9 need to be 10? Well, it's visually obvious to a small child what's going to fit there. So 9 and 1, 10. And we play lots of games 
lots and lots of games. Building tens. We can build walls. Eight needs a two. Seven needs three. And they get the experience of it. Six needs a four. And of course, five needs a twin if he wants to be ten. This is deceptively simple because once the children understand, or actually the student, even adult students, understand that using this simple idea of building tens, we can do mathematics much more quickly, especially with, say, subtraction, and we make the math easy and we take them off their fingers, where oftentimes you'll see mistakes by just one because they miscount. Let's illustrate. Let's say I have two tens and three. And I want to take away something just simple like seven. I want to take this away from there. Now adults need symbols. 23, and I want to take away 7. Am I able to take this from here? I can't take this from here. What we say is, would you rather add or subtract? I'd rather add. So what I'm going to do, hmm, well, if I take this out of here instead, then you'll see I can add very simply. Let's do that. Let's take this 7 out of that 10, because that's really what we're going to do. And how many is going to be left there? Well, if we've been playing these games, we know that 7 needs 3 to be a 10. So I'm just going to add 3 to this 3, because that's where it comes from, here. And I see very simply, it's 16. Actually. is 6, and there's one left here. Now, all I did was add. I didn't have to cancel and borrow and put more into the ones place, because we spent probably, in most schools, maybe one, two, perhaps three years telling students that once we get more than nine here, it becomes one of the next kind, a 10. And then all of a sudden, when we go to subtraction, we tell them that, oh, we can borrow here and put more than nine in the ones place, which is vaguely confusing to some students. Let's try another problem. Okay, let's try another problem. And you can see that it really doesn't matter. Bigger is actually funner in Morton's and math. It's not correct English, but bigger is definitely funner. Let's take uh, something simple like 34, and I want to take away 8 from that. So 34, and I want to remove 8 from there. Well, can I take the 8 from the 4? I can't take this 8 out of the 4. And see, all I'm going to do in my mind is I'm going to add 2 to 4, get 6, and I'm done. Well, and I have one less there. But the way that works, and the reason that works, is because I take this from there, and I know because I've been playing that 8 needs 2 to be 10. So what's going to be left when I take the 8 out of there? It's 2. And if you want to make the complete swap, some children like to do that. Numbers, once again, made up of other numbers. 4 and 2, same as 6. And we can see that what we've done is take 8 from 34, simply add 2 to the 4, get 6, and now I only have 2 tenths. Subtraction. Very, very simple. No counting backwards on your fingers, no getting lost, no borrowing. Very simple. All right, let's illustrate one more point especially for the adults. 
So oftentimes this is too easy. Here we have 40, 2. And I want to take away 6. 40, 2. We're going to take away 6. And as I said, with the magic of DVD, you can always roll back and watch this several times. But all I'm going to do, because I know that 6 needs to be a 10, or wants to be a 10, and what does 6 need? He needs a 4. So I would just add the 4 to the 2 to get 6, and then subtract. Right? But actually, we're adding. Now, for adults, they always want to see something. All right, so here. Here is 6. Now, the first question I ask is, do I have enough? Do I have enough? I don't have enough. I can't take it out of that 2. So oftentimes, we just remind ourselves that we don't have enough, that we're actually going to take it out of here. So what we're going to do, again, is take this 6 out of one of the 10s. Now, what does 6 need to be a 10? It needs a 4. And you can see a 4 would fit right there. And again, now I see that I have... 6, because I just added 4 to the 2, and I have 3 left over. Done. That simple. No borrowing, no putting the 1 there and counting backwards from 12 or doing normal subtraction. We just add small numbers together. And of course, if I had some 10s over here, then I would take them from these 10s. It's that simple. Now, that's addition and subtraction, and we have many games to play with addition and subtraction. We have special trays that are built especially just for this. And uh, we have kits that talk about want to be a 10. We have kits that talk about uh, having a party. And basically all it is is counting and numbers are made up of other numbers. Now the next concept in mathematics, going the regular way, because we teach mathematics as a gestalt, as a language all at one time, is multiplication. Now, multiplication, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it here in this DVD or this video because the mother of skill is repetition on this. And one of the best ways to learn the multiplication, and it's the milestone, the absolute milestone of mathematics is the multiplication, is through skip counting and playing games with numbers and building blocks. And you need to spend a lot of time working on that. And here, we can see, really, we have fours here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, seven fours is the same thing as 28. And what I have here is four taken seven times. And four taken seven times, four taken seven times, is the same thing as 28. Now, some children, when they're memorizing, and all they're doing is memorizing flashcards, they think that there's actually some kind of magic here where this turns into that. But what we're actually doing is counting fours. How many fours did we count? We counted seven of them. And we have lots and lots and lots of games and uh, music to learn the multiplication tables. Once you master the concept of multiplication, all the other mathematics becomes very easy because multiplication just allows you to count very, very quickly. And I can't emphasize it enough that the multiplication tables 1 through 12 must be mastered. And with Mortensen Math, we make this easy and fun. This brings us to the next concept in mathematics, or the next uh, area of mathematics that children usually despise. And here's the thing, is that many people find, or we've done many studies, where we teach multiplication so late in the education system that the brain of the child is past the repetition point. And the multiplication becomes tedious and hard, and we start losing children right there. And if we haven't lost them there, we then lose them in this thing called long division. Many children decide that they don't like math after they have to do long division. And it's a compounding problem because part of the problem there is that they haven't got the multiplication down, 
So of course the division becomes more difficult. But let's make division and the concept of division using a rectangle and counting and counting things that are same very simple where we can introduce it to even very young children who are maybe just four or five years old. Let's tell a story about Boy Scouts. I'm from Hawaii so we talk about pineapples in our Boy Scout story. Uh, Twelve Boy Scouts go out and pick some pineapple. And they pick 132 pineapples. And at the end of the day, the farmer says to them, well, gee, you picked 132 of these. Why don't you just take them and uh, divide them up equally among yourselves and take them home? So how many, would be the question, does each Boy Scout get? If they have 12 Boy Scouts, or if we have 12 Boy Scouts, they pick 132 pineapple, how many does each Boy Scout get? Here's the simple problem. Now, let's illustrate this using more than some math. And again, we would use a three-period lesson to develop these concepts. This is 100. These are tens. And you know, when we're adding tens together, one ten, two tens, three tens, three tens want seven tens to become 100, and so forth. Nine tens needs one ten to become 100, and the concept is the same as when we were doing addition with single units with tens. Hundreds, tens, and some units. And here we have 132 pineapple. Now, our problem said, and I'll put this problem up here, that we had 12 Boy Scouts. And you could even get blocks out. And for expediency's sake, I'm not going to do that. But you could get blocks out, and now these are just Boy Scouts. And you could put them up here or on your table or wherever you're working and line up 12 Boy Scouts. And, you know, this could be a tall Boy Scout, another one, and we could have some Boy Scouts here that showed up in uniform. And you line them up here. And you say, well, let's see. If I was going to pass out my pineapple to each Boy Scout, could I pass them out one at a time? One, one. But, oh, that would take forever, wouldn't it? Because we'd have to start breaking up the tens. Oh, I could pass them out ten at a time. Ten... 10, uh, but that would take forever too. So here's what I'm going to do. If I have my 12 Boy Scouts, you have to use your imagination that they're lined up here waiting for their pineapples. Could I just pass out my pineapple like this? And I've passed out now. Each one gets 10. Everybody has 10. Now, I'm not done, but can you see that I've passed out 102 tens? Passed out 120. Now, if I'm a little child, I can see that I've passed out 102 tens, and I have some left. Am I done passing out my pineapple? Well, I have, how many here? Oops. I have 12. I have 12 left. All right, so I pass them out like this, and I'm done. I have each Boy Scout receiving 11. You see that right here? This Boy Scout would get 11. This Boy Scout over here would get 11. Everyone would get 11. So if I have a rectangle, which is what I have here, with 132 pineapples in it, or 132, and I pass them out to my 12 Boy Scouts, each one gets 11. And another way to look at this is that if one side of this rectangle is 12, the other side is 11. And it really is that simple. And see, most people don't realize that this symbol right here is shorthand for rectangle. Now, if you put this in class or on your paper and you just put 11 there and you don't show your work, you may be penalized for this if you just knew in your mind that you could put it together like that. So, we need to be able to show our work. So what do we do first? Well, first, and this is just the concept of it, we do this. We count the 120. And we see as we're going along this side, and we could use the example of Hiram the ant up on his little stepladder, and he sees that when he goes by here, he's not just counting the edge anymore. He's not just counting the 10 and the 1. He's counting everything that he sees here. He goes by 120. Now, 
what's left? Well, we look down here and we can see that there was 12 left. I said we hadn't passed out all of our pineapples and there's still 12 left. So we've passed out the other 12 pineapples or these 12 pineapples and there's none left to pass out. And you can see that this mirrors the notation. In fact, this is where the notation came from. Now, many students will say, well, 12 goes into 13 once and they don't even put a zero here because they don't understand the concept that we've actually counted 120 and that it's 10 times 12. And they just use an algorithm with no understanding of what they're doing. So later on, when they get to the quote unquote higher mathematics, they're confused. And this is hard. And this is just one example. And like I said, because we are pressed for time, one hour to present all these concepts in mathematics. But can you see, we use the rectangle to facilitate counting. Simple as that. And when we counted, we never even got off this hand to solve this problem. How high did we have to count to? We counted one. We counted one of these blue ones and one of these green ones. We never got even close to nine. We only count things that are same. We couldn't call this two because this is a big blue one and this is a green one and they don't look same at all. So I have to mark them as one of those and one of those. We only count things that are same. And we didn't even use zero or one to solve this problem. So those first three concepts, Mathematics is a study of numbers, and all we're doing is counting. The highest number we count to is 9. We only count things that are same, and we form a rectangle to facilitate counting. It's all we need to do this division. Now, we're going to change things, but it's going to be the same. <laughs> we're going to change things by changing the base. This is base 10. Now we move into base 